the Pluto retrograde. So here's the first. I think this is where I want to start. Um, outer planet eclipses are, and how I work with them are a little bit different than personal planet eclipses for me. Outer planet eclipses, I really align those with, and I have very like significant um, aspected outer planets in my natal chart, but it's really more about making sure everything is right from that we perspective, that broader perspective. Um, it's a lot of solidifying things versus when you have a personal planet like Mercury, Mars, Venus, um, go into retrograde, it tends to affect the I much more, the me, right? How I, what I do, things that I learn. Where for me, I always tend to find correlations with outer planet, and I said, I think I might have said eclipses, outer planet retrogrades, um, where they're more, they're more the bigger picture. And that, and Pluto is a generational big picture planet. Um, a very collective society planet, even though anything that happens in society also affects the individual. So this is where we begin to see like, um, through me, all things are possible. I am connected into the whole. It is through myself that the whole gets better. And so this is how we begin to like really connect all of those pieces in. So I wanted to just kind of level set with that because yes, Pluto is going retrograde. He is in Aquarius. Yes, he is going to go back and forth over Capricorn. We had Capricorn Aquarius line like four times. Even through all of that, um, it comes back to my choices, how I react to things. Because again, it's been my experience that these outer planets tend to work more globally and make changes globally, which then has to land within you. And how do you react in those spaces? How do you maneuver in those spaces? How do you work with that, with what has changed in, in your, in and around you from a more collective perspective? So just level setting on Aquarius's journey on 323, 2023, he went into Aquarius. So March 23rd, dropped his little toe into Aquarius and sat there, right? He is at zero degrees, 22 minutes. He has only moved 22 arc minutes since March 23rd. And he's going to continue to sit at zero degrees um, till I think it's June. It's around June of 2023. So he's just going to be sitting, chilling here. Ain't moving. Then on the 1st, Hell Station retrograde that will happen at 1218 Central Time at zero degrees, 22 minutes, like I said. And he does this solo, which is a beautiful thing. Our first Pluto retrograde in a brand new sign. Very happy that there's not a lot of planets surrounding him right now. There's no direct aspects or even within a three degree orb. Um, yeah, four of pentacles to this Pluto stationing you know, stationing retrograde and this four of pentacles, it is like he is isolated. He is building that foundation. He's building what that means and what that looks like in, um, Aquarius. And he's also, again, another left hand facing card. He is also looking back to Capricorn. What was left unfinished? What unfinished areas and foundations did I leave back in Capricorn that I am going to be going back to three times to get that shit right. To finally like put like Capricorn was so heavy. The changes that were needed and I'll go into what those were here in a second. Like they were so much that he has to go back and forth four times to make sure that what he leaves there what foundations he leaves there is exactly what was needed in order for us to elevate our power. That's Pluto's game, right? We He wants us to be in our full expression of our power. So, um, so thankfully, he does that solo. Then on October 10th, 2023, he will station direct. That will happen at 27 degrees, 54 minutes of cap, and this time, 
he has all the people involved with him. So he has a square to Mars, a sextile to Neptune, who at that time will be retrograde, and a square to the North Node. And we've got the Six of Swords. Yeah. He gonna be going forward like, shit, I got a lot of things. Yep, I did I did my due diligence. Pluto will be doing his due diligence going back into Capricorn again, cleaning all those things up. But there is this like when he stations direct because that station will happen and then we'll have our eclipse, our two eclipses, what, not even a week to then two weeks after that. So week to three weeks later. So it's, there's a lot, and again, this is now in the future. So there is a lot that Pluto is carrying forward. There is a lot of lessons learned. There is a lot of, I just keep hearing the word like weight. There's a lot of weight. There's a lot of heaviness. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of things that are needed for the future that he'll be stationing direct with. So while outer planet, again, this outer planet may not be working so directly, obviously that depends upon your natal chart, but it may not be working with you super, super directly. There's something that Pluto is bringing, is bringing along for the ride. So that might be just something to look at and pay attention to. And then um, on 121, 122, depending, 2024, so January 21st or 22nd, he will then ingress back into Aquarius. He's going to do this four times. November 19th, 2024. Yeah, we're going way ahead. But this is, again, that boat going into the future. Um, November 19th is when he will ingress into Aquarius to stay, where he will be here for 21 years. 21 years. January 2044 is when we get uh, Pluto ingressing into another sign, and that will be the sign of Pisces. So, um, lot, lots. And that's the great thing. Again, this is why I wanted to level set with like how I kind of think through outer planet retrogrades, Pluto in particular, Pluto is such a massive energy and such a, um, such a point, a poignant point of our energy system out there in the cosmos. And he is slow. These things, yes, you may get tastes of them, but he is truly, when we talk about generations, like we can speculate what a generation is going to look like, but it's not really until that generation grows and we can have some history and some insight into what they're doing that we really get a taste for what that generation was all about, right? Like, for example, when we talk about the different, the different ways that Pluto affects things, when Pluto was in Scorpio, and I'll kind of take you through the last couple of signs, when Pluto was in Scorpio, that was all about the AIDS epidemic. So if you were alive, 80s, 90s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And while that was occurring, and yeah, you could have some insight to while it was occurring, um, what was happening, it's really kind of like a couple years later that we get to look back and go, I get it, Right. Then in Sagittarius, Pluto messed with travel and religion. And that was all 9-11. That was all TSA. That was all um, people, you know, that change in travel patterns. And um, higher religions coming out, you figure, you know, like that's kind of that, um, like Western yoga coming in really heavy, um, gurus showing up and like really getting in. And I know like for me, I have a very large stellium in Sagittarius. So that was a big process for me as, as the world was going through their Pluto and Sagittarius process. I myself in my own life was having and being able to insert and pick up and maneuver within what Pluto was doing for the collective. Um, then when Pluto went into Capricorn, 
financial collapse. And we've seen that more than what well, Ten of Pentacles pops out. Um, yep, the magician and the devil. Look at that. Look, Pluto obviously has something to say about what's about ready to happen when he keeps going back and forth into Capricorn over this next year. Um, so that it was the financial collapses. That's what happened with Pluto in Capricorn. It's going to be what continues to happen until, what did I say, November 19th of 2024. He is going to finish up, look, devil's in the details, right? He is going to finish up what all of his transit in Capricorn has been about, and it has been about our money. It has been about what we value. It has been about um, what we build upon, right? You look at, look at how much finance has changed, right? Not just financial collapses, because that was a big theme, but how much finances have changed. Where are we at right now, right? How is your budgeting? Let's talk about global economics. Where is that at right now versus when uh, before Pluto got into Capricorn, 2008, I believe. Drop it in the chat. Quote me if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive it was in 2008 when he first ingressed. Um, but like Bitcoin, think about that coming out, right? And and the popularity and all that. NFTs, um, banks closing down. All of these sorts of things are really what Pluto and Capricorn is working on. He's alchemizing. Like, I love that I put this this way. So we have the Ten of Pentacles, the Magician in the middle, and the Devil. So the Ten of Pentacles and the Magician are looking to the left again. This is so, this is like the most interesting thing that keeps coming up. They're looking to the left again. The Devil has the male looking to the left with the female looking to the right because the Devil's on the other side and the Devil is on the right side. So it's this like, Prior to Pluto getting into Capricorn, there was a Ten of Pentacles. We were living high on life. We had all the things. We, you know, it was spend, get, consume, do, instant gratification. All of those things were very, very, very prevalent. And then here's Pluto, the magician, waving his magic wand, right? And now here we are, where we are sitting in what is left over where we are sitting in this state of, okay, what am I going to do with this, right? This devil, what am I going to do with what the magician alchemized for me? What Pluto is going to do when he heads back into Capricorn? Um, and like, oh, oh my gosh, I think we're on Twitch. Shaded Zero, thank you so much for popping into the chat. Welcome. Um, we weren't sure we were having a little Mercury retrograde moment. So it is great to know that we may be live on Twitch. <laughs> Thank you, Mercury. All right. So back to this Pluto devil conversation. So once that magician has alchemized and as he continues to go back and alchemize what the Ten of Pentacles really means for us and the world, there is a lot of choices that are going to have to be made once he is done. So we are looking at, again, November 19th. Um, what's going to be done with that? How is that going? How's, how are we all going to have to change with that? All right. And then Pluto and Aquarius. What has this been all about? Well, let's talk about it. Tech, AI, bioengineering. Those were the three things that I really honed in on. And there is a lot of different ways that those things come out, by the way. Um, so tech can be a lot of different forms of technology. AI, that is artificial intelligence in, in all of its multiple forms, whether that's like a virtual reality, augmented reality, and then bioengineering, especially when it comes to like medical, something that is medically going on. So Pluto and Aquarius. Um, so what have we seen so far? Again, he came in in March. It's been a little over a month. What has Pluto been doing in Aquarius? Well, let's take a look. We have AI. AI is blooming everywhere. Companies are scrambling to integrate AI into 
everyday tools and uses that we use technology for. Um, in fact, if you are on YouTube and when this gets posted on Twitch after the live, I will throw the um, thumbnail up. But on the thumbnail, I actually put an AI generated photo, which is I typed in, I think, Pluto retrograde and Aquarius, I think were the was the way that I um, put it in there. And that's the picture that came out. So I'm really excited. I think AI is is very interesting, early adopter of technology, and I'm excited to see where that goes and how that can continue to support and integrate um, in my life. And not only that, but for habitual sages, for the business, for Twitchy Tuesday, etc. cetera. Um, on 420, actually, this just happened five days ago, SpaceX Starship launched, and it was spectacular in the fact that it launched amazingly launches any sort of rocket launch always brings tears to my eyes I'm I'm just one of those people I cry every time I see a rocket launch it's just so spectacular to me and um and then it launched and then blew up and that was also just as spectacular and um yeah three of pentacles building that foundation thank you Elon building that foundation of the rocket because that's that's what was really interesting. And that's where Pluto is going to come in and like try to manipulate with all of the other energies around, which is the goal of that launch was a demonstration. It was a demonstration if the rocket could ignite and clear the pad that the pad that it was on, which is 500 feet, by the way, if the rocket could ignite and clear that pad. So the tower that's on that pad. That was what the whole thing was. It wasn't supposed to go to outer space. That wasn't the goal. If it did, I maybe that might have been Elon's goal, but the goal of that launch was a successful launch. It was successful. The work that they put into it was successful. And not only that, but the fact that it blew up is even more amazing because now they get to go back to work. They get to go back to work and build more of that foundation, this three of pentacles. What do we need to do in order to continue to make this ship continue to grow, continue to build? And that may be it. Like, I'm really interested, as we talked about with Pluto being such a long 21, 21 years in a sign, it takes a while. What we see today with this SpaceX uh, Starship Imagine 20 years from now what we're going to see. What is that starship going to look like after Pluto gets done here? That's really cool to think about. There has been a lot of notable medical advancements. Um, I read one the other day around clotting that some there were some MIT engineers that were figuring out um, a really cool thing to do with clotting. So again, this is medical advancements are going to be happening. I personally have seen a lot on my feeds of black holes and Mars lots of interest in Mars and pictures of Mars, lots of like pop-ups on like black holes and scientific discoveries um, within black holes or just more deeper understanding. Um, lots of robotic augmentation of body parts. So um, being able to have different robotic body parts and making them look more real or be more accessible or function, um, function more accurately than just like, you know, where it can kind of connect all of the pieces for you. So your hand actually moves like a hand. Um, that was really cool to read about chip technology. Lots going on with chips right now. And then gene editing and food. And that one to me has a lot of Uranus and Taurus flavor to it. But um, that's, that's going to be really interesting. So that's just in the first 30 days, right? 30 plus days of Pluto being in Aquarius. Here are some of these. And there's so many more out there. There was There is a plethora of technological advancements that happened in 30 days. And that's like, this is just the little flavor that we got. It's going to even get better. Um, And when I was thinking about Pluto getting into Capricorn again, I almost kind of, I was laughing to myself because I got this image where he was like laughing where he was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave. Yeah. Five of Pentacles. I'm just going to leave all this chaos right here. I'm going to leave all this chaos right here for y'all. No worries. I'm going to go back. 
I'm going to go back into Capricorn where I also left a shit ton of chaos behind. And I'm just going to keep uncovering. I'm just going to keep digging seven of pentacles. I'm just going to keep fostering that ground, getting that harvest in Capricorn, getting those last final vestiges up. And I'm just going to keep uncovering more. I'm just going to keep bringing it up more and more and more. Um, and man, like this blending, the lovers just popped out this blending. Um, there's something very interesting that came up for me between the combination of technology and financial. So Pluto, technology and Aquarius, Pluto, financial and Capricorn. And I'm getting this with the lovers, this blending. There's something more here because Pluto, again, only goes back to 27 degrees. So he's still in the last deacon of Capricorn. And he's just going to keep going back and forth over this line. And so it's like blending of the two. How is tech and finances going to conjoin together? How are how are they going to merge into this union with the lovers here? How are they going to do that as Pluto begins to windshield wipe back and forth? Silicon Valley Bank is a wonderful example of this. Um, this Pluto Capricorn Aquarius line that he's moving over, you know, Silicon Valley Bank back backed a lot of tech startups, technology. So here is how there could be this play, again, this union of some sort between that tech and that financial as Pluto does this over this next year and again, till November, 2024. Um, Pluto is all about power. That's his MO. And there are future timelines out there, potentials of whoever owns the technology holds power. 